I'm Saturday haul for you guys today and I'm gonna go ahead and start off with a few items that I got from the drugstore. I wanted to try this new Voluminous Noir Balm Mascara from L'Oreal. There was something about the balm that was in the title of the mascara that really kind of intrigued me, like a nourishing aspect to the mascara. So I got 980 Black Noir and it does say on the packaging that it's clean from parabens and mineral oil up to seven times fuller lashes and then it says 99% natural origin ingredients on the packaging. So this is what it looks like right there. There's a total of 0.26 ounces of product and this guy is made in the USA. So it's been a while since I've tried a L'Oreal mascara to be honest. Um, I almost wanted to get the Voluminous, the original Voluminous in the burgundy color just because of the shade I thought would look super pretty. But um, from what I remember, I wasn't crazy about the Voluminous formulation so I passed on that. <laughs> I wish Maybelline Sky High would do like a deep navy and a burgundy. Oh, wouldn't that be? That's my favorite mascara if I haven't told you already. <laughs> but this is the uh, Noir Balm from L'Oreal. Uh, the packaging is really nice. And this does have one of those rubber bristle wands on it, which I do like these a lot. Um, I used three coats of this and it really separated my lashes. It didn't give a super ton of length compared to the Sky High from Maybelline, but it did volumize nicely after three coats. Granted, today is the first day that I've used it. Um, and it, they look like, um, they look silkyish. There's like a little bit of a shine to them that looks balm-like. So the balm in the title, I feel like, fits. Um, I will say, though, two times today, and I've had this makeup on for about five, four, five, four or five hours. And I've brushed off some flakes underneath my eyes, like are the fell on my cheeks twice today. So <laughs> maybe the more that I use it, it'll stop doing that. Or it could be the cold. I'm not sure, but I'm not crazy about flakes. It wasn't too bad though, because they brushed right off and I haven't had any smudging yet. Um, if it does smudge, then it's a deal breaker for me. Flaking isn't quite a deal breaker because you can usually brush them off your cheeks, but smudging, <laughs> that's not as easy to remove. So uh, this is the mascara that I have on today. I do have false lashes on as well, but I do like the way that it makes my lashes look. It doesn't, again, go quite as long as the sky high, but for what it's worth, I'll like do a little swatchy swatch of the mascara there so you can see the color. This is just the black noir shade right there. I also picked up another one of the NYX Lift and Snatch Brow Tint Pens, which is one of my favorite brow pens. The color that I would usually use is the shade Ash Brown, which is deeper than the taupe shade, and I will swatch them together. Um, but I found that, like, I've had this pen for a while. It's lasted a really long time, the Ash Brown, and I feel like it's deepened slightly since I first got it, which I don't know if that's something they all do. I'll find out after this taupe one. But I do feel like it's just it's deepened a little bit. So this one's a little bit darker, so I thought I'd try the taupe. So I got taupe, and I've got it through my brows today along with some other new brow products that I've been trying, and I'm glad that I got this taupe shade because it, it was a little bit more forgiving to use, if you will. Um, it does lean a little bit warm though. I wish it was a bit more cool in tone. You can see right there it's got a bit of a warm hue to it. So that's the taupe one. But this has got a brush tip applicator that's very very fine. And again this is one of my favorite brow pens that I have tried. And it's a drugstore product too so I think that they're like $9.99 at um, Ulta and I think they also have them at Target and stuff. Okay so this is the... <laughs> I wanted to show you this. So the mine has been doing this. Granted, this product here has got some age on it. I want to say I've had it for about a year, if not more. So I've been using it for a while. And it's like the product has kind of leaked out a little bit. And I swashed or like wiped it off. Swatched it. <laughs> I wiped it off on this Kleenex. And you can see it almost looks black. So I try to make it a point to like really... Um, shake it up. Granted, at this point, what I'm going to do now, because I do have a backup of the ash brown shade, so I'm going to break that out and put this one into my empties because it's gone a little bit funky, so I don't know how well even this swatch of this will do for this. Yeah, you can still see the color. I shook it up beforehand, but um, it's quite a bit darker than taupe in any event. Let me grab the backup. Let's see. Let's see if that one is the exact same color as this one that I've had for a year. Because, like, again, the product that comes out around, like, right there, that's, like, black. So I just pulled the ash brown out that was in my uh, backup drawer. And we're going to find out right here on camera if it's changed a little. Yeah, it's a little bit deeper, isn't it? Yep, it is. I was not... I, w I thought for a minute I might have been, you know, losing it a little bit, but it's I'm not. <laughs> 
So that's it brand new and that's it after about a year. So I'm going to really try to make it a point when I use these pens because they do last quite a while for me to really shake them up every time that I go to use it because either there's a little bit of separation or maybe it just deepens with time. I guess we'll find out with this one, but just a little FYI, going off on a tangent. <laughs> but I do love the NYX uh, Lift and Snatch Brow Tint Pens. Again, I have got the taupe shade that I just purchased, which is this one lightly through my brows today. And these have got 0 0.03 fluid ounces of product. That is such a little amount of product for how long this pen has lasted me. <laughs> and I do store them upside down as well, maybe since the stuff is kind of coming out or whatever, I should probably turn it around the other way. But I am gonna go ahead and put that deeper one in my empties. <laughs> so let me tell you where this is made uh, real quick here on the packaging. It's made in South Korea is what it says on the packaging. I can't find the packaging for the taupe. I spent a good 10 minutes trying to find it. So I'm just reading you what it says on the ash brown there. We're going to go off into a bit of a brow spiel here. <laughs> I did get the new e.l.f. soap brow in clear. And it says clear on the packaging. So I'm hoping this comes out in colors because I really like this product. Um, I am very new to the uh, soap brow situation. I've seen it around for a really long time. But I was just not about to like use a bar of soap to do that to my brows for whatever reason it, I had it stuck in my head that I was going to get breakouts on my brows which I'm very very prone to both in brow gels, brow pencils, powders, and brow pens. <laughs> so I'm very apprehensive about putting soap in my brows. Granted this is called soap brow so I have been using this for the past three days and I haven't had any breakouts in my brows which I'm really happy about. Um, I don't have this particular one in my brows today but I have another one that I picked up yesterday that's tinted because I wished that this was tinted. I loved how much this like volumized my brows and it really like made them stand straight up. The one that I put in today is doing a really good job of having them like stick up as well but I feel like the e.l.f. one is stronger and it also thickens more than the other one that I'm going to show you in a minute. So what I've been doing with the e.l.f. one is I purchased two more spoolies as well because these are really inexpensive and I was bending them so I didn't want to take like one of my Chickahoto ones and like bend it or whatever. So I got two of the e.l.f. lash and brow ones um, as well. These are like $2 and I bent it to, you know, rub it into the soap or whatever and then I've got a little dropper with some water in there. And so what I've been doing with this product and how I also use the one that I'm going to show you in a minute is the same way. And so I've been getting it wet and then I do kind of one brow at a time. And while the soap stuff, the product is still kind of damp in my brows because I wanted to get um, that volumization. And I was trying to think if it hardens, you know, how do I get like powder in them? Maybe I should watch some videos. <laughs> but I was trying to think of the easiest way to do it where I didn't have to, you know, either put down powder first, then the soap brow, then like do all these things. Um, I wanted, I wished for that clear soap brow is what I'm trying to say, to just be tinted so that when I put it on, it volumized my brows with a tint, okay? <laughs> so in the meantime, since that one is clear um, and the other one I got isn't dark enough, I've been using just a brow powder. So I would like comb it through um, while it was wet and while it was still damp in the brows, I'd stick the little brow brush into a brow powder. So I got two of these e.l.f. Uh, little brow deals and I, that's the powder I've been using and then I would just go over it while it was damp and kind of do one brow at a time. And that's done a really good job. And then I just filled in the sparse uh, parts of my brow with the NYX brow pen and I love the effect. I do like the way that they look today. Um, but I think that I like the e.l.f. soap brow better. And the one that I keep referring to, let me just tell you so you guys are like, well, what are you talking about? <laughs> I purchased the Revolution Soap Styler Plus that holds brows in place whilst creating fluffy styling. Um, this is 0.17 ounces of product and this one is made in China. So I'll grab the um, actual little product here in a minute. But this one here, um, it's more fine. Um, and it, it doesn't kind of thicken quite as much as the e.l.f., which I liked that too, but I like the, the e.l.f. does, you can see a little bit more product in your brows, if you will, compared to this one. And the tint in this one is very, very hardly there. <laughs> For me, it could just as well not be there. So this is the soap styler that I got with the tint in it. It does have a little spoolie in there as well. Um, the handle's pretty short though for my larger hands, but whoa, oh my goodness. Oh. <gasps> Well, that's not good. 
<laughs> I mean, I can put it right back in there, but at least you can see how much product is in there, which I mean, this is kind of a lot of product, 0.17 ounces. I'll just stuff it back in there. <laughs> um, I just put a drop of water or two on there and like mush the spoolie in there, much like the e.l.f. and combed it through my brows, dipped it into the e.l.f. powder, kind of got some of that on there, and then went through my brows and filled in again <laughs> the sparse spots with the NYX pen. So, um, I mean, this is doing a decent job. It's a finer product, not as thick as the e.l.f. and it, the tint doesn't do like anything for me. <laughs> so, and then just to show you what the uh, e.l.f. one looks like, again, I've been mixing with powder. Does this fall out too? I mean, it, yeah, it does. <laughs> so I don't need to get too excited about it falling out in the other one because it's like a, I guess it's like a block of soap. For whatever reason, I wasn't as intimidated by putting in a product dedicated to eyebrows on my brows and it was a bar of soap. <laughs> <laughs> and I go back and forth with really loving a super spiky brow and these brow soaps have spiked them probably better than anything that I've tried. I don't like them flattened to the face. I like them to have a little bit more 3D to them so they look fluffier. So I do like the extra spike that the soap brows are giving me, but like that elf one, man, my brows are like way up there <laughs> and I was enjoying it. So anyway, that's my little spiel with the soap brows. I've been enjoying trying it out, that's for sure. And I've liked the overall looks after the fact even though I've been using these to kind of dip in with them and stuff like that so I got the two little elf uh, brow palettes here and I, I first purchased the neutral brown and then I got this one online and then I saw the taupe one in store and thought hey that looks like a really good tone as well so I did get the taupe one today I've got this shade the deepest powder shade in the taupe quad mixed in with that brow soap from revolution uh, through my brows today so these have got uh, two waxes in them a clear and then a tinted one so this is the taupe one this has got a total of 0.14 ounces of product in it and these are made in china i don't really use a brow wax but i mean for what it's worth i'll just you know swatch them and then these are the two powder shades and these are three dollars and the powders are very nice in my opinion i think they're great and i mean especially with that uh that three dollar price tag so you can see the wax got a bit of tint to it, but it doesn't have any hold wax doesn't for me. But that's the taupe one right there from e.l.f. And then the other one is just a shade deeper. And I think there's one more deeper than this as well. And I think one more lighter than the taupe too. So this is neutral brown right here. And these are the two waxes. I kind of wish they were just all powders to be honest. Well, not the clear, because that really wouldn't do anything, but like just four like tones of brow powder, but I don't know why I'm swatching the clear. It's fine. <laughs> we'll do it anyway. <laughs> so there's the uh, neutral brown right there. And I've been enjoying using these little products in conjunction with the soap brows. And so far I'm leaning more towards liking the e.l.f. one because of the extra hold and volume that it gives, but... I don't think they look bad today either. I mean, they look fluffy and they're like still standing up. <laughs> so that's my little spiel with brow products. I kind of was on a mission there after I started using that e.l.f. soap brow. I was like, I need to find a tinted one so that I can just put the water in and comb it through and kind of be like a one and done type of deal, you know? Um, anyway, if anybody knows, I'm on the hunt for a new brow gel. Um, I am almost certain that they are discontinuing the CoverGirl Easy Breezy Brow, which is one of my favorite brow gels. That's a product that I can do two coats in both brows and be out the door and just get volume, color, shape, everything to my brows. I love that brow product, but again, it's like they're discontinuing it. But why though? <laughs> the only thing that I could say could be better now that I'm experienced the soap brow thing is that they had a little bit more hold, but that's comparing them to the soap brow, which has mega hold. So anyway, um, I am on the hunt. Uh, I do like the Kosas Air Brow. That's great. I think that it's really expensive for how little product that you get, and I go through them really quickly um which other ones i've tried the nyx ones those are nice they got nice fibers in them too but they're not quite as voluminous and one and done for me like the easy breezy brow from covergirl so i'm open to recommendations if you guys got anything if you have tried the easy breezy brow and know of something that's comparable to that i would love to know And then I made a special trip to Walmart just to find this eyeshadow palette from e.l.f. <laughs> and it's the Cookies and Dreams eyeshadow palette. This is the first one that they've done in like their bite size that's an eight pan. And I just really liked the color story. This is actually the palette that I have on my eyes today and I really like it. Granted, 
this was not three dollars <laughs> um, I'm pretty sure this was ten dollars so quite a bit more money especially like if you would like take the two fours right three plus three is six so this should be six dollars <laughs> But it was $10 at Walmart, so Elf, I don't know about the price hike, but I will say that the quality is really nice. I've gotten along with a few of the bite size um, fours in the past. I think that especially for $3 that they're pretty good, um, but I do feel like this one's just a little bit better than those ones. Granted, again, those ones are pretty good for three bucks, but um, I love the look that's on my eyes that came out of this eyeshadow palette. I think that it is super, super pretty. The browns end up being like a really cool tone and then mixed with these blues, super pretty. And I had very little fallout and they were just really easy to work with as well. So I'm really happy with this little palette. There's a total of 0.6 ounces. I just went and looked at my receipt. This was $9. Still, should be $6. <laughs> So let's give you some swatches. Again, I really do like this. I love the look that came out of it. Uh, it's all I have on my eyes today. The only shade that I didn't use was this black with the um, kind of blue undertone, blue sparkles in it. Um, there are five, no, four matte shades, which are these two right here, and then these two right here, which is the perfect amount of mattes. And then four shimmery type shades, deep, medium, and light, which is perfect for how I like to do my eyeshadow. So let's give you some swatches here. Nice, right? And the color story just works really, really pretty. There's some great neutrals to work with those kind of blues in there. And then these next guys. So yeah, I don't I don't think I'm imagining things, but um these might be just a hair nicer than the other ones. And so maybe that's with um what the price hike is about. I'm just going to tell myself that, okay? <laughs> Pretty nice little feller though. Right there. And again, I got mine at Walmart for nine bucks and it's what I have on my eyes today. And I love the way that the look came out of this guy. And it was super easy to use again. So that is the eyeshadow palette from e.l.f. in the Cookies and Dreams which makes me want cookies and cream. <laughs> I also seen this display for some new Physicians Formula products and I got this Butter Buddies bronzer. Um, it's the Butter Puff bronzer, 0.45 ounces of product, which is a really nice amount of product. And it does say on the packaging that the proceeds support Earth Day, which I'm always about supporting such things and that this is made in Mexico. So this is the box packaging right here. I actually purchased a bunch of um, physicians formula products, but I haven't used those just yet. So I just want to be able to have used the products I show you and give you my opinion on them before I show them those other ones. I just went to the store yesterday and just like went ham on a bunch of drugstore stuff because it was like all new stuff and I hadn't been to town in a while. So anyway, <laughs> here's this bronzer. It does have a sheen to it. It does pull a little warm on my really cool skin tone but it was very easy to use. And this is the only shade that I saw available and it's very light. It's light with a warm undertone. So if you have a light, I think if you have a light yellow olive maybe undertone, you'd really like this. I think that um, I made it work with like the blush and stuff like that, but it does pull a little bit warmer than I would like on my skin tone but it's very, very soft. It does kick up quite a bit of product in the pan when you put your brush in there um, and it has a fragrance to it. It smells, it smells like the butter stuff, like a coconutty tropical type of scent. And I mean, it's, it's pretty strong. I, I can't smell it on my face when I use the product, but I can definitely smell it when I like open up the compact. But anyway, that's the Physicians Formula Butter Buddies bronzer right there. And I do have this on my face today for a bronzer. Now I'm going to go off a little bit on concealers because I purchased three new ones, two additional shades, the ones I've already tried, and then one new one. And this is from Benefit, and this is the Boeing Bright On Concealer, which is a new product from Benefit. Um, they came out with what I can tell two corrector type shades, one's yellow, one's pink, and then some skin tone shades. And I immediately went for the shade Lychee, which is the pink corrector in the range. It says three in one brightening illuminate under eyes all day with this silky smooth waterproof concealer red lj known to help visibly brighten color correcting pigments known to help hide dark circles serum like formula helps seal in skin hydration so i like everything about 
the way that that sounds. So this again is the shade Lychee. I really like the packaging too. It's quite uh, small and it looks like a pencil, much like their original Boing. And I did try the original Boing <laughs> concealer and that was just thick and heavy and not, not for me. So um, I don't have that any longer, but this concealer has got a total of 0.17 fluid ounces of product and it says it is made in Italy. So this is actually what I have got underneath my eyes today. And I love this. I really, really love this. This is a light type of a coverage. I put it on and when I went to blend it out, I was like, where did it go? Cause I had only tapped it a few times and it was like, blend it out and so I like stepped back and I was like oh it's there it just blended out that easy and it was super super pretty I've been wearing this uh quite a bit I think it brightens my under eyes really well without being too bright it actually kind of uh made me reminisce about the naked skin brightener in pink which I think I had gone through like five tubes of that in the past that was a very light corrector as well light formulation light on the skin it's like a thinner type of a texture and they discontinued that um um, this is a little bit darker than the original Naked Pink concealer, and that's fine because sometimes that Urban Decay one was a little bit brighter. But anyway, this is what the wand looks like. It, it goes in and out of the tube very nicely, which I say that because the one that I'm going to show you in a minute does not. <laughs> um, and I love this. It's very pink. So you can tell when I swatch this, this corrector shade is like my skin tone. <laughs> That's how pink I am. I match characters really well. So that's how come when I blended it out underneath the eyes, I couldn't tell like, cause for one, it blended out so fast, but it also matched the skin underneath my eyes right here to perfection. That's like how it just matched so well. It was hard for me to see that it, it blended in that fast, if that makes any sense. <laughs> but anyway, this is the shade Lychee right here. And I love it. I love the product itself. It's thin. It does a nice job of covering. And this particular one matches me really well. I think that if you are looking for heavy duty coverage with really dark circles you definitely want to use this like as a corrector and then top it with something heavier because this is a light coverage but because of that pinkiness um it does help with the, the little bit of darkness that i do have i don't have too terrible bit of darkness except for in the inner portion like of my eye there but it brightens it really lovely and I'm going to leave that on there um, to compare against some of the other ones that I got so I love this this is the bright on concealer from Benefit um, again in the shade Lychee and then I did go ahead and get another one of the LYS Beauty triple fix full coverage brightening concealers which I had hauled the shade LP4 last week which was the light with the pink undertones and it's very dark <laughs> it's not it's not for fair skin that's for sure so I went up to the LN3 um, and this one is borderline I can make this work pretty decent um, I can like set it with a little bit more of a brightening powder but even this if you have a really fair skin tone this is going to be too dark for you so I left the uh, Boing lychee on there so I can swatch these um, and you can kind of see the tones and stuff like that and same thing neither of these the one the LP4 was supposed to be a pink undertone this is this is this is not pink <laughs> This is pink, this is not pink. <laughs> and then the um, LN3 is a neutral, which again, this works out better for me than the LP4. So let's swatch these. And I do like the actual packaging. It's like a frosted plastic and it's a triangle. And I think that's cool and everything, but which kind of drives me crazy is the wand. It's long, but it, you have to pull quite hard to get this portion out of the tube. And then when you put it back in, you have to push quite hard. And I'm telling you, one of these times I'm going to, well, I'm pushing that hard. It's going to bend and I'm going to break the fuzzy right off of it. I haven't done it yet. I've been trying to be careful, but that is quite annoying for me. <laughs> so anyway, here's L3N right here. And again, this shade definitely works better for me than the L4 LP. What, what, what is it? The LP4 shade, which I hauled last week. Um, a little bit about the formulation. I bought another one of these because I really like the formula. It's also really thin and it covers, uh, I would say, light medium. It, it covers and it's very, very thin and lightweight underneath the eyes, which is another reason why I got um, another shade of it because I like that thin formulation. So that is LN3 right there. You can see it looks pretty yellow on my skin tone. And then here is LP4 right here. And this is not fair. This is, I would say this is like light medium skin. 
And after you set it with a powder too, I find that both of these shades deepen up underneath the eyes. The um, Benefit one does not, but these two both do go a little bit deeper than even what they look like right there. So that shade from LYS is the LP4 right there. And then um, this again has got hyaluronic acid, turmeric and ashwagandha in it and some like skincare ingredients, which I really like to have, especially in concealers around the eyes. So um, lovely concealer. If I could just get a shade right. <laughs> so you can like, I mean, I don't know. I just love that pink in the boing there, but you can see the tones of those two right there. And then the other concealer that I purchased another one of is the new KVD Vegan Beauty Good Apple, which has also helped to have like nourishing ingredients for like around the eyes and stuff. Um, it does say for under eyes and beyond, crease resistant, no cake, full coverage infused with apple extract to help nourish skin. So this concealer is definitely more coverage than these other two two that I showed you, but even though it has that higher coverage, it still sits very, very lightweight on the skin. Um, not as thin as these ones, but it's still pretty darn thin for how well it covers. So the shade in this that I hauled last week was Light 107 with pink undertones, and the one that I just got is Light 109 with pink undertones. And to be honest, I think I could even go a shade deeper yet. That's how light this concealer runs. So we'll swatch the 107. Um, that I hauled last week. We'll put 107 right here. The bottle of this is super cute too. And then that's what the doe foot looks like right there. So that's 107. And then we'll swatch 109 right here. So here's 109. And then we'll do a little blend out as well. And you can see they th these ones do have, I, I wouldn't necessarily say a pink undertone, especially comparing it to that Benefit, but they have a slight more peach as opposed to like a yellow for me. So again, here's 107. And here is 109 right here. And you can you can see even just me blending them out on my hands um, how much more coverage this product has compared to these two concealers. Um, but it's still very lightweight. It's a beautiful full coverage concealer. I've got some wicked nice concealers where I'm contemplating doing my first declutter like video, um, like de dedicated decluttering, like getting ready, rid of half of my concealers because some of these concealers are so good. I'm just... <laughs> having issues with the tones especially in that LYS and again I think I need an even deeper shade yet in the KVD vegan beauty or I could I could use to try especially going into the summertime but in terms of pinkness and tone my favorite out of these is the benefit because of how pink and brightening it is on my super pink skin tone like I said it matched my um, skin underneath my lash line right here perfect it was great anyway <laughs> that's my concealer spiel <laughs> right there and then sticking with base products i did get the new kosas revealer skin improving foundation broad spectrum spf 25 it says medium coverage natural dewy finish um, it's got 7.5 percent zinc oxide in there which i love that this has got um, skincare skin friendly ingredients in it and also spf so that's what i was super excited about i got two shades of it i got one 150 light cool and I got 180 light plus cool so it says light plus with I don't know what the plus is about what's the plus about I don't know anyway uh, with cool pink undertones so they both have pink undertones one slightly deeper than the other there's one fluid ounces of product in here and this guy here is made in the USA it comes in a frosted glass bottle and then there is a pump on there as well again one fluid ounces of product so this is the foundation that I have on my face today I've actually got the deeper of the two the 180 on my face and two pumps can do my whole uh, face I originally did one pump and it does a nice job of evening out the skin tone but I've got a little bit more redness on my cheeks so going in with that extra pump helps to cover up that redness that I have on my cheeks so just for a little bit more coverage so it is buildable if you want to layer it up but um, otherwise I would say the way that I've been using it with the two pumps it's a medium coverage for me it's not like super thick or cakey or anything like that and it definitely does not feel heavy on the skin it's very lightweight feeling it does feel very skincare like which I love in a foundation product something that's going to sit on my skin all day 
might as well be working towards doing something for my skin <laughs> while it's sitting there. So um, the shade range, the, neither of these are cool. I, they are not cool. <laughs> um, they both pull very yellow on my skin tone, which you'll see when I swatch them. I am able to make these work depending on what other products that I use, but like today with the Physician's Formula kind of yellow bronzer, and then I use the Laura Mercier Translucent Loose Setting Powder, which has a slight yellow hint to it. I do feel a little more yellow than I would like. So um, just fair warning. <laughs> These these are not cool for me, which I'm a very I have a very very strong pink undertone I feel like I have to kind of emphasize that but I wanted to show you guys real quick That those two uh, LYS shades look how they have uh, deepened on my my skin there I'm just leaving those up so you can see them against the foundation um, But I've been wearing this foundation every day since Tuesday. So five five days now. I haven't had any breakouts or anything like that, any strange reactions. It feels really comfortable on the skin. I really love the way that it feels on my skin. I think it looks really pretty too. However, it does have a little bit more slip to it than like the number seven foundation that kind of holds a little bit stronger. So if I were to accidentally like, you know, smudge my face with my hand or something, I would get some patchiness there from it. So, and that probably is in part due to the more skincare type of ingredients. Granted, the number seven has that too, but that's a thicker formula. This is thinner and a little bit more runny. So you are supposed to shake the bottles. Um, so I would, I would say this isn't the longest lasting foundation. Like it's not quite as long lasting as the NARS, um, but the longest, wearing one that I have is the number seven with the SPF 50 that you guys know I really, really love. I am talkative today, but I feel like I need to explain this. <laughs> so anyway, uh, let's do 150 first. I'll put, I'm going to put a little dot of 150 down and then below it, I'll put a little dot of the 180. And I like this foundation enough that I think I am going to go ahead and try one more deeper shade down to the cool level because I feel... Like this is even, I look a little bit light even for like my winter tone. And that could be a part due to the yellowness of this foundation. Whereas if it was a little more pink, I might not feel like that. Here's 150 right here, which is quite light. I wish I would have got 180 and then the next shade deeper, but cause I just think that's too light for me. And then there is the 180. So 150 and 180 right there. And then for fun, let's go ahead and swatch it next to the number seven, Cool Vanilla, which I have used for a very long time. And this does have a cool undertone to it. I love this foundation with the SPF 50. Um, oh, I wanted to make mention too, the Kosas foundation does have a bit of a scent to it. It's not from a fragrance or anything. It's just the product itself and it's got a 7.5 percent zinc oxide and a lot of the times products that are high in just like zinc oxide have that type of a scent so I'm almost certain that that smell is from the zinc oxide that's in that foundation but let's also swatch uh, Vienna from NARS as well I was in Ulta yesterday too and I was able to swatch um, Yukon and Yukon looks more pink than Vienna does so I do like this foundation I'm, I'm, I'm weighing, like, should I get another shade of Kosas and skip the NARS? Or do I like the NARS enough to get the NARS and another one of the Kosas? I'm not sure yet. <laughs> I'm on a foundation adventure, which is very rare for me, because once I find, like, good base products, I get scared to use other things on my acne-prone skin. <laughs> so anyway, let's do Vienna, too. I just want you guys to be able to see these, like, shades together, because I know it's really difficult to find shades online, you know? Especially, ugh, I'm just, like, really disappointed when they say they have cool undertones and then I swatch them on my skin. I'm like, this is not cool at all. <laughs> so, okay, so here is the number seven cool vanilla right there. So you can see the yellowness in comparison to the cool vanilla from number seven. And then here's a Vienna from the NARS light reflecting, which is super not pink. <laughs> It's supposed to, uh, according to what I read on the internet, um, it's supposed to have pink undertones and that's just not pink. So this is ideal for me, the number seven shade. So just so you guys can see the tones. So you can definitely see the Kosas is more warmish yellow and so is the NARS, especially compared to the Cool Vanilla from number seven, which is my perfect like winter foundation shade. So I just wanted you guys to be able to see all of these skin products together for undertones and stuff. That is what those look like. And you know, something is telling me, something is telling me I will be picking up another shade of the Kosas and a little bit deeper 
to see if it's it doesn't like make me look so lightish yellowy and I really want to try that NARS Yukon I really do but granted if the if the Kosas is a little bit slippery for me in the winter time it's really not going to last in the summertime but I love those skin care ingredients let me read the ones that it's <laughs> I'm going off on a tangent. Um, it says that this has got hyaluronic acid, niacinamide, peptides, squalane, pro vitamin B5, arnica, caffeine, and artemisia flower. See, and I like that. I, those are things that I want on my skin. <laughs> so I probably am. I'm probably going to get the next shade down after 180 with a cool undertone. Anyway. I got the two new Kosas foundations. I also got one of the new Cali Ray Glazed and Infused Plumping Glassy Lip Trips. This is the Plumping Lip Gloss and I got Free Palomas, which is a light pinky shade. Um, I was just thinking like, it seems like a good product, like a glossy lip balm style product, which is exactly what it is. This feels so comfortable on the lips. Um, it's not like super sticky. It's got a nice shine to it. It feels just really good on the lips. So this is the packaging right here that it comes in. There is a total of 0.25 ounces of product in here. And this one here is made in Italy, according to the box. It says um, sustainability bioplastic tube with 100% post-consumer recycled plastic cap and paper box. Juicy hydration, water binding, prickly pear extract for immediate fullness. Now this is considered a plumping lip, lip gloss, but there's nothing in terms of tingling or pepperiness or mintiness or anything like that in this product. When I put this on, I don't feel any noticeable plumping ingredient in here. Um, if it pulls hydration and makes the lips look plumper because of hydration, that would be the plump effect from it because there aren't again no like cayenne peppers or mint or anything like that that makes your lips feel tingly you put it on you won't notice like any sensation if you will when you put it on the lips I actually have a bit of this on my lips today for some shine because I've got a, a ColourPop lippy stick on and it was giving me a little bit of an inner rim kind of uh, line you know how it kind of gathers there so I put some of this on and it's really helped um, that from doing that because I put it right there so that the extra shine is coming from this product but again it feels so nice on the lips this is free Palomas there's a just a baby hint of uh, nude pink in this one not a lot though like when you spread it across your lips I don't notice a ton of color just a just a hint just a hint of color in this guy so I don't know if blending that out will do anything but I really like this. I'm even contemplating buying another shade of it, but I'm trying to, again, be better about that kind of thing. So that is from Cali Ray and the glazed and infused plumping glassy lip trip in Free Palomas. And then because I love the Patrick Ta Major Headlines blush palette so much, the one that came out for the holidays that have got the creams and then the powders in them, um, I love this thing. I wanted to try some other shade, shades in the range, and this one was out of stock for a while, but this is the She's That Girl shade. Um, and they actually have came out with another new single shade in the range, and they also came out with um, all three shades that are in the major headlines palette in the singles as well as what I've seen online. So if you wanted any shades from the palette, they are now available in the singles. Um, and there is another new shade as well to the range. But I, this one was an existing one before the palette came out. So this is She's That Girl. This is the um, palette that I have got on my cheeks today, both the cream and the powder. And I can't remember where i seen. i seen somewhere that... Um, Patrick Ta likes to put down the powder first and then tap the cream over the top of it and I really like the way that that looks as well so there's just something a little extra about doing it that way I, you still retain a little bit more I don't know glowiness from the cream doing it that way so that's how I used it today and it just looks really pretty on the cheeks so this guy's got uh, 0.21 ounces of product in the cream and 0.14 ounces of product in the powder and this is made in the USA and this packaging is like a trip because it has like that Tom Ford style lip to it except for this portion doesn't lift off and this stay out to the bottom it's just the opposite so <laughs> I don't know how long I was like holding my thumb on this piece trying to pull the lid open and like thinking I got like a faulty package. It's not like the Tom Ford, it's just the opposite. <laughs> so you hold the bottom and like I'm still having troubles here. So if I tip it upside down, it's easier for me to go like that, but it lifts like that. 
Just, just an FYI. <laughs> so I've worn this a, a, quite a few times since I've gotten it. There's the powder. It's a really pretty pink, warm pink blush, both the cream and the powder. So I like the little uh, casing there for the cream as well. And again, this is what I've got on my cheeks today. I use both products and I love it. And I wanted to make mention, this is my favorite brush for putting on cream blushes. This is the uh, BK Beauty 101 brush. Um, something about that pinch shape with that kind of bevel to it, like when you go to put it right on the cheeks, not only because there's it's really dense and synthetic and soft, um, it covers the area perfectly, but it, it also blends it at the same time. So it's really quick and easy without disturbing my set foundation. So I have been loving this brush right here for cream products in general, for uh, cream cheek products. Um, blushes, cream blushes is what I've been loving that brush for. So anyway, here is the, she's, what I say? She's what, what are we? She's that girl <laughs> from Patrick Ta. And then here's the cream. And here is the powder. And the powder does have a little bit of a sheen to it. It's not uh, a super flat, flat matte in my opinion, but it's not shimmery at all. But isn't that just a pretty duo? I just can't tell online. I think that um, uh, this shade in particular I thought was going to be darker the way that it looked online. And I was happily surprised that when I got it, it was lighter. So I kind of want to get that more neutral, corally looking one as well. Um, it looks really deep online though, but I'm hoping that it'll come... It's in my cart. I haven't placed the order yet, but I want to. <laughs> um, I'm hoping that it'll come and be a lighter kind of corally shade as opposed to what it looks like online. Anyway, these are beautiful products from uh, Patrick Ta. So that is the She's That Girl cream and powder duo right there and I love it. And then I placed an order on the Adept Cosmetics website for some of their eyeshadow palettes. I had been lusting after some of their uh, pre-made palettes for a while but they sold out so quickly and they're always on kind of a pre-order um, but I was able to grab two of them this time and I also got another one of their magnetic palettes one of their large ones these are the 88 pan ones um, I really love their magnetic palettes I have several of them they're very very nice quality uh, this one here I've got um, it says Adept Cosmetics imprinted right there and these are all Luxie which <laughs> I don't think I've hauled any of my Luxie shadows. Um, these are all Luxie eyeshadows. The top two rows are brand new ones. They kind of redid their brand a bit um, and have like been releasing little collections that are like one-timers. So that's why I think that the majority of these shades are no longer available. So that it makes it hard for me to want to show these to you guys. That's the shadows that are in here, but I love the Adept Cosmetics um, shadow palettes. This particular one is a little bit thicker, so you can put like domed or baked products in there too and close the lid and it won't smash them. So it's a little got a little bit of depth in there. And the eyeshadow palettes that I purchased are the Amunet New and it's got Amunet New on there. And then I also got their new Plain Jane Remastered palette. And then inside my package, they sent me their Ninhydrin palette, which I was so excited about. So they threw this palette in there. And Adept has sent me PR in the past. I have an entire uh, palette full of their single shadows and they make really nice quality shadows. That's what made me want to get their pre-made palettes really bad in the first place is because I like their original single shadow, for shadow formula. I don't think that they sell those particular particular ones anymore either but these palettes here are really nice so I'm going to go ahead and swatch all three of them for you guys um, I'll start off with the Ninhydrin palette this is the one that they sent in my package that I didn't purchase I really like their style of packaging as well um, these palettes are made in the PRC and this one here I want to say has got a little bit more product than the other two the pans in this one are larger um, but there isn't any product information for this palette. There wasn't like a sleeve that had the information on it. So um, these are magnetized inside as well. So you could pull them out and there is a mirror in there. So in the Ninhydrin palette, the pans are a larger square compared to the other two. And then also the names aren't printed on the back of these ones, but they are magnetized inside the palette. What I absolutely think is, I love, I love that they did this with their newer ones. Um, the pans are a little bit smaller, but, and they're also magnetized. The names are on the back. That is something that I super appreciate appreciate it's the little things man because <laughs> like I wish so bad that there were names on like the back of my ColourPop ones I'd be more apt to want to 
really customize palettes and do all that type of thing but for whatever reason it bothers me that I, I will have to write on the back of every single pan and try to match them up where they go as opposed to just having it printed on the back. It's a whole situation. Anyway, <laughs> these ones do have the names, you know, in the palette, which I also really like, um, but they're not on the back of these ones, but they're on the back of the other ones. So anyway, still magnetized. This has got two mats in there, this one and this one, and then the rest are really beautiful shimmers, duochromes, um, very foily, beautiful shadows. Again, um, Adept makes really nice eyeshadows. I think, if I'm not mistaken, I did have um, their uh, singles that they did a while back, I think ended up in my yearly favorites. Their matte formulation is beautiful, but look at how pretty those are. Next, guys. Boom. Oh, look at that. So, so pretty. And then these last four here. This shade is like so intense, that purple. Oh, look at that. That is like a multi-chrome right there. Beautiful, beautiful shadows. Because there is this lighter kind of pink shade in there, I can make it kind of standalone because it does have a lighter shift to it. Otherwise, I like all of these palettes that I got as pairing palettes. The, there's, I think the other one, the Amunet New, is it can be a standalone for me too, but that's beautiful, right? So that one there is the Ninhydrin palette from Adept Cosmetics. So the Amunet New and the Plain Jane Remastered palettes have got the same pan size. Um, and it was the Plain Jane Remastered that had the sleeve with this information on it. So I was going to go ahead. I saved it so I could read it to you guys. It says there's a total of 0.56 ounces of product in the palette. And it also says um, made by Adept Cosmetics in China. And then there are a couple shades in here that say not intended for use around the immediate eye area, which would probably be a pigment thing um, for staining. I've used both of these palettes a couple times and I haven't experienced any staining with the shades, but I do want to make uh, you guys aware. I'm, I don't know how the heck I'd be able to have you guys see that. <laughs> so there are 12 shades in here and I just wanted to pull a pan out. So this is AC11 the shade in the Plain Jane Remastered. It's the first shade in here. Every single shade in the Plain Jane Remastered is a, like a super shiny, either duochrome or slight multi-chrome shadow. They are beautiful. So what I love is you can pull this out and it says AC11 on the back of the pan. I love that. <laughs> Again, it's the little things. So let me put this back so I can swatch them for you guys. And then the uh, Amunit New also has got the names on the back. They're just over there being geniuses at Adept Cosmetics. <laughs> so here's the Plain Jane Remastered right here. There's a little mirror, just like the other one, except for these pans are a little bit smaller. These shades are stunning. So I use this guy as a pairing palette. I've used it several times paired with other shadow palettes because again, everything in here is very high shine, shimmery, dual chrome, multi-chrome shadows and they are stunning. Can we, can we just? They are quite pricey, but for what you're getting, I feel like, you know, in comparison to other brands that sell things that are similar to this, they're actually not as expensive as those. These next guys. Oh my gosh, I love this shade. Love this shade. I love I love like I love every shade <laughs> that's in here. And then these next four here. They're so pretty. All in a palette too. A magnetized palette with the names on the back. So pretty. And I think 
they what they do they've been doing um some pre-orders and i want to say i can't remember if it's this one or the amunit new is available for a pre-order but this is the plain jane remastered and i believe they just keep restocking um a few of their palettes but they do sell out pretty quickly this is beautiful this is just absolutely beautiful i'm probably going to pull all of these shades out too and put them in an actual big adept cosmetics palette because you know and then here is the amunit new palette again you see that they made the colors of the palettes all different so you can distinguish them um there's a little mirror in there they flip all the way back they're magnetized the names are on the back need i say more this one's got quite a few mattes in there the adept cosmetics matte formulation is really really nice too so these three right here are mattes these top three right here and then you've got thoth amon and Im imhotep so there are six mattes and six foily shimmer duochromes in here. And again, these are beautiful too. This is one that I can, this is the one, yeah, that I can make standalone because this kind of light shade. But I also like to pair this as well with some other um, lighter kind of shimmers. This is like a, almost a multi-chrome shade. This one's a multi-chrome too. It looks like a, a bronzy orange, but it also has these shifts in there that are super pretty. And depending on what other kind of shimmer shade you pair with it, it shifts differently. It's really, really beautiful. Yeah. Real winners there from Adept Cosmetics. I have been, really been loving their pre-made palettes. So that one there is the Amunit New. And two, I purchased the um, Magnetic Palette and the Amunit New, the Plain Jane Remastered, and then they sent me the Ninhydrin in my uh, package. I just wanted to um, reiterate that again. But aren't those beautiful? Ugh. So pretty. And that is everything that I have for my haul today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Thank you for watching. Do not forget to wear sunscreen and I will see you guys later. Bye.